Okay, Hare Krishna, get ready. As I mentioned earlier, that uh, this is a uh, philosophically deep part of the Gita. And we start off with the verse 3 of the ninth chapter, in which Krishna says, now who is not going to be able to understand this? Uh, he explained in the earlier chapter, if you remember, excuse me, in the earlier verse, uh, that those who are not envious, they will be able to understand, those who weren't envious of his position. Uh, now, he says, Ashadadana purusha dharma syasya parantapa aprapya mam nivartante mitum samsara vartmani. Those who are not favor faithful in this devotional service cannot attain me, O conqueror of enemies. Therefore, they return to the path of birth and death in this material world. So he says that those who are practicing bhakti yoga have to be faithful. Uh, if they're not faithful, uh, and faith means a lot of things, faith means faith in him, uh, faith means uh, faith in the process, faith means enchanting Hare Krishna. But those who are not faithful, they won't actually become liberated, but rather they will come back uh, to uh, this birth and death. How will they come back? Well, we discussed that uh, earlier. They're not going to come back from zero, but they will come back to wherever they left off. They will continue from then. Uh, even that is a blessing. But now, here, we really talk about uh, the oneness and difference of the Supreme with the world. He says, Mayata tamidam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina matstani sarva bhutani nachaham teshu avastita. By me, in my unmanifest form, this entire universe is pervaded. All beings are in me, but I'm not in them. Now, this is not a Zen riddle, but it's a riddle to people who are not faithful, people who are not knowledgeable, and people who are not open to understanding things in a different way than they're used to understanding. He says, by me in my unmanifest form, and I've spoken about this a few times earlier, I've explained that there are three features of the Supreme. There is the impersonal, all-pervading energy, which, this tree is the energy uh, of the Supreme. The sunlight shining on my face is the energy. Uh, everything is made of the energy of the Supreme. Then there is that voice, inner voice within us, uh, our conscience, our good conscience, uh, who's telling us what to do and what not to do. So that... Uh, uh, second aspect, and then there's the third, which is the original feature of the Supreme as a Supreme Personality, who now here he says, in that sense, everything is in me, because all, everything is within this world, and this world is his energy. But at the same time, I'm different from everybody. So don't think that I am this creation. I am in one sense, but I'm different in another sense. So now Krishna elaborates even further on this. He says, and yet everything that is created does not rest in me. Behold my mystic opulence. Although I'm the maintainer of all living entities, and although I am everywhere, I'm not part of this cosmic creation, for myself is the very source of creation. So his self, the creator, is different than the creation in the sense that the creation is a byproduct of the creator. But of what did the creator create the creation? Of himself, because nothing else exists prior to the creation other than himself. So now he says, yes, although I'm the maintainer of all living entities and although I'm everywhere, I'm not part of this cosmic plantation, myself, is the very source of creation. So he is separate. 
Now, do we accept this? Do we understand this? This is what being faithful and being non-envious means, that we accept Krishna on his word. Why? Because he's the authority on who he is. And we may say, I like this, I don't like this, but that's a detail. Ultimately, he's the one who calls the shots. Why? Because that's part of the uh, theology and philosophy of Bhagavad Gita. We accept that Krishna is the supreme, the supreme personality of Godhead. And now he gives us an example. Understand that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests always in the sky, all created beings rest in me. So the wind blows within sky, we use the term ether. So the ethereal element, space, that which contains everything. So everything is in the space, but at the same time, space is not affected by its creation. So even though he's the creator, and even though there are so many things that transpire and go on in this world, but at the same time, he's not affected by it, just like space. Whether it's a dust storm, whether it's rain, whether the wind is blowing hard or it's not blowing at all, does it make any difference to the space in which all of these things are happening? What to speak of all the things that humans do in space. Space will accommodate clean air, it will accommodate pollution, but space never becomes polluted. So in the same way, although everything is within the creation of the Lord and that creation is He, but still He remains distinct and different, and at the same time, He's outside of everything. Is it hard to understand? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to understand. Why? Because we're talking about a oneness and a difference. That everything is one with the Supreme and everything is different from the Supreme and it's happening at the same time. So we can expect things that, well, sometimes my, the color of my house may be blue and sometimes I may paint my house red. So at one time it's red, at one time it's blue but I don't have my house red and blue at the same time. I mean, the same walls are not red and blue at the same time. It's either one or the other. So everything is part of the Supreme in that everything that is created is his energy, but at the same time, everything is different from him. He's outside of everything. And this is going on all at the same time. It's a philosophical principle which underpins bhakti yoga. It's called in Sanskrit, achinta beda beda tattva. Simultaneously, oneness and difference. That everything is simultaneously one and different from the Supreme. So in the monist uh, philosophy where they say that all is one, and you've heard that. It's partially true. And there's the dualist philosophy that says that everything that exists is different from the Supreme. And that's partially true. But here Krishna is saying something different. He's saying everything is all one and everything is all different simultaneously. We're one with the Supreme and different from the Supreme. The creation is one with the Supreme and different from the Supreme at the same time. Now, I think that's enough, and I hope that uh, that gives enough room for devotional meditation on the groundwork of bhakti yoga, because bhakti yoga, although it's about love, and love is an emotion, uh, and uh, it's about devotion, which is an inner experience, but at the same time, uh, it's underpinned with uh, the deepest uh, and the most uh, exacting and perfect philosophy. Remember, achinta beda beda tattva. Simultaneously, inconceivably, because it's inconceivable, 
oneness and difference. We have to accept that fact. And that's the last point I would just uh, add here uh, as a uh, add-on, uh, is that it's inconceivable for my house to be black and red at the same time. That's because of who I am. But it's not inconceivable for the Supreme to be one with and different from his creation. He's everywhere, but he's different from everything. And he's also in one place. Bhakti Yoga is about finding that one place where he is.